Hello, welcome to Sensible Transfers. I'm JJ Poole and this is John McKenzie. This week we've chosen Spurs. But why have we done that, John? Well, I think Spurs are pretty interesting because the last time we covered them in Sensible Transfers, their squad was all over the place. Ange Postacoglu had just come in. Spurs had loads of wing backs, not enough full backs, not enough wide forwards. No one really knew what was going on. But actually, as we look at the squad now, I think it's much better than it was. I think they've done a pretty good job of making it look better. So I think that's what we're going to talk about today. It's an impressive turnaround in a short space of time, wouldn't you say? I would say. Well, that's good because what we're going to do is try and improve the squad even more by picking players for the positions that we feel they can improve in. That's what we do in Sensible Transfers. We're going to put one player each from, I think it's two positions, and then some wild cards. Stay tuned for those. <laughs> and if you want to suggest a player, yeah, just get into the comments below. Well, first, we're going to look at Spurs' business so far. And in this section, we're going to look at Spurs' business so far. Starting with who they brought in, I guess, which is Timo Werner and Radu Dragusin so far. What do you make of those? Uh, I think they are interesting signings. Timo Werner might not be a player that many people are excited about because obviously he didn't do fantastically well for Chelsea and not even at RB Leipzig afterwards. But it does make a lot of sense. Yeah, I like to differentiate between the deal and the player itself because, as you've mentioned, he's quite a controversial player, quite a Marmite player in many respects. And we could argue about whether or not the profile fits. But I think when it comes to the deal itself, it makes a ton of sense because... Everything stands to benefit Spurs, I think, because it's a loan with an option. If he works, great. If he doesn't work, great. See you later. So, yeah. And one thing we'll cover just coming up is that uh, it might not suit the normal profile of what a winger would normally do in an Antipostokoglu team. So that's kind of interesting. Maybe, maybe that will come up soon. But also they signed Radu Draguzin, who sounds like an ancient dragon. Yes, and he, he, he looks like an ancient dragon as well. Yeah. He's a right-sided centre-back who right gives him depth, but also a competition for first-team place. Perhaps. Sure, yeah. He's played on both sides of a back four, um, well, in the centre-back positions. The sort of profile that he has, very similar to what you get with Mickey van der Ven. So, like, incredible athleticism, um, the ability to transition defend really well, which is important for an Ange Postecoglou team when you are playing that high line. Um, I think that there's some questions about him in possession. In possession, he's a good ball carrier. He can play decent penetrative passes, but he's very right-footed, um, and he gets away with that with his athleticism. It'll be interesting to see how that goes down when he's playing in that Ange Postacoglu system where it's all about deep build-up to try and create these dynamic yeah. transitions as well. But, yeah, I think it, it, it's a perfect option, like you say, back up for, for those two other slots. Well, part of squad building is important, right? Because I think the first... Team partnership is going to be Romero and Van der Ven. Those are the two that they'll normally play. So having someone who can compete for those choices is really important. And then you need one extra backup, which is why I guess Davies then makes perfect sense because he can cover that yeah. left side, particularly in Dragusin's there. And in theory, there should never be more than one of them injured at once, you'd hope. Yeah, both of these transfers that we're talking about here if with Werner and Dragusin make a huge amount of sense in terms of when you look at the squad, the positions that they needed to fill in the moment that they needed to be filled. Yeah, in many respects, it almost feels as though we're like, yeah, Spurs are doing those sensible transfers, which I think is, is quite fascinating. Well, I think we've covered them really well. But if you want to learn more about who those players are, what can they do, John? They can go to The Athletic. Yes, there's a number of uh, different articles about Spurs on The Athletic, and they're covered really well by Charlie Eccleshare, Jack Pitbrook, et al. That's true, and that is Spurs' business so far. Well, let's go back to the squad list now. Look at all the players, John. There's so many here. Yes. Where do you think we should go next? There's, there's lots. Well, I think the most interesting area to go to is, is the wide forward area because we spent a ton of time talking across the last six months about how Ange Postacoglu really needs to get exciting two-way wingers. And wide we teased forwards. it earlier in this video. We did, yeah. And, uh, and uh, actually, in the space of time that we've been talking about this, he still hasn't really signed anyone like that. He's brought in Mana Solomon, Timo Werner, who we've been talking about, and then Brennan Johnson as well. None of those players is really what we've been describing as a really exciting two-way winger who can go either way around a fullback, get to the byline, cut, cut crosses back as well. And the thing about Ange Postacoglu's uh, style of play that's so interesting is that it's just designed to get the ball into this area so that the striker can have one, two touch finishes. I, I've just been doing a, a lot of research on striker finishes, and I looked at Richarlison. This season, he's only taken one shot that isn't a header that has um, has been more than two touches. All the rest of his touch, uh, shots have been two or one touches. That's because the system is designed to generate these sorts of chances. And one really good way of doing that is have a dribbly winger who can get to the byline and play these cutback, cutback crosses. So, yeah, I, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this because we, we haven't really seen Spurs in the market for one of these sort of really high-end, 
high volume dribblers who's going to create loads from from just basically beating a fullback. Well, I think this is interesting because when you look at like when you go through all the different players you could possibly sign, wingers tend to either be uh, inverted wingers or inside forwards who come in off this side like mm -hmm. this, like Kuliskowski does. Like you say, but when you look at the numbers, they tend to either be really dribbly boys who don't really have a creative output, um, and they cost a lot of money. So their output might not be huge, but they cost a lot of money. So the best thing to do probably is try and sign a young player with high ceiling potential who can then develop into a player who's worth something like seventy million pounds, eighty million pounds. So you get them now for twenty thirty. Hopefully they develop, and then you can make them work tactically within your team so you get the output that you want mm. and desire before they're set in their ways of doing the things that they do. Which is why, so the t a player they're linked with, and would be my sensible transfer choice, is Antonio Nusa, um, who plays for Club Bruges at the moment. Uh, a Norwegian player, he's got four caps already for the country, uh, and you can kind of tell when players are young and playing for their country or just getting minutes in Europe and in their domestic league that they're going to be quite good. And the thing with Nusa as well is that often with young players who are really good dribblers is that they might lack the physicality that would suit a Premier League team. And you can look at them and think they might get bars off the ball, but he's tall, this guy. So you can t I think he's got the, the body that he could play in the Premier League, but his, uh, I think you can tell his composure on the ball and the way that he dribbles with it look, makes him look like a player who is already confident and can play at an increasingly higher level than he's already at. So I think that it makes sense as in this terms of sensible transfers in that when Nusa, if he plays in the left or the right, if he were to, to join them, you'd get... Multi-positional flexibility, which is really important. Obviously, you can play in either wing, but you can go both sides on either wing as well. So you can play on the inside or the outside, uh, depending on the right or the left. But then you also get the output from him because he does actually also assist and score and create, and he's really, really good at dribbling. Yeah, I've had a bit of a watch of him recently. I quite like him. He's playing a, as a, a sort of an outside forward in a four-two-three-one for Club Brugge, which Brugge, which means that he's quite narrow. But I watched a bit of his tape at Norway, where he's playing as a sort of classic touchline hugging winger. Uh, and he can obviously, you know, he ha he has all of the attributes to be able to do that two-way dribbling around yeah. fullbacks. He's very exciting. They like him in Norway. And Seb Stafford Bluer, you know him. He's written an excellent article on him. This is in The Athletic as well. You should read that. I enjoyed that very much. But that's just my target. What's your target, John? Yeah, so I've gone for a similar sort of vein of uh, of thinking that you have. And that's look for some younger players who have a huge amount of upside. Um I considered a bunch of options and I think you know the correct answer to this is who should Spurs sign and the correct answer for who should anyone sign as a wide forward at the moment is Nico Williams but we've already recommended him in the last um, sensible transfers for Spurs we've already done it this time for and he's mega expensive Man United. yeah and he's going to be expensive but he's he's another he's like the, the finished article two way two side winger right where you can you put him on either wing yeah. and he'll give you He'll give you great upside on both of those sides. I also looked at players like Armand Loriente, Crescencio Somerville. If leads don't go up, I think will be available for uh, a, a decent amount of, of money. And then Matthias Zule, who is a Juventus player on loan at Frosinone. He's also yeah. got the most uh, attempted uh, dribbles or take-ons in the entire of the top five leagues. Yeah. yeah, but the player that I'm actually going for is Savio, who is at Girona right now. He's a 19-year-old wide forward. Um, Girona top of La Liga at the moment. Um, he's an interesting player because he's technically uh, at Troyes in France, um, but he's on loan at Girona, and both of those teams are members of the City Football Group, which I guess will raise questions about the availability of Savio. But I was thinking about this and I thought there's a couple of things to take into account here. One is that um, Man City recently sold a couple of players to Arsenal, who were title rivals at the time in 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 Gabby Jesus and I know and but it's their B team players are selling <laughs> <laughs> sure but the other thing is is that with Savio if you don't think that he has the profile to fit at Man City the big question is then what do you do with him because the, the City football group is like they Girona. make profit right? it's yeah. Girona and then Manchester City right so if they don't want him at Man City then the thing to do is, is sell him on but I think he's a he's a super exciting uh, player and the fun thing about him is that he's a left footed left forward which is a bit of a dying breed recently. Um, and again, as I said before, we're talking about players who are going to be able to go um, into, into these wide areas and then play cutback crosses and, 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 and uh, passes across the box in order to generate those one, two touch finishes. I think he'd be perfect for that. He's been, he's been playing on that side for Girona for most of the season. That isn't just to say that he is just a classic traditional winger who's going sure, yeah. to hit bylines. He, he does also like to come inside. With Girona, they have this fantastic flexibility that allows him to, to come inside and then have a fullback uh, or even an outside centre-back overlapping in the wide area as well. So I think he would be perfect for this. And yeah, in terms of what we're looking for in terms of data, um, high volume dribbler. So 124 dribbles attempted, which is third in the top five leagues. 
and 55 completed, which is also third in the top five leagues. Now, that's a 44% completion rate, which is quite low, but it's because he's a creative player. He's trying a lot of audacious dribbles. And yeah, you don't say, make things happen unless you try them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's not too much of a worry. You could say that, again, you, talk, you mentioned it before, a lot of these players like high volume dribblers don't actually have a huge amount of production. Um, and it's true with Savio. He's got 60 shot creating actions, which puts him 96 in the top five uh, um, leagues, which is... Yeah, not very high at all. Uh, and if you look at it in terms of per 90 numbers, he's down at like 250th odd. Um, but actually, if you look at his expected assists, he's third in the top five leagues as well, yeah. just behind Bakayo Saka, who I think is on 6.7 um, expected assists, Savio, and Bakayo Saka is on 6.9. So you're still getting a decent amount of production from him as well. Do you know as well, when you put a player like Nusa or Savio in a team and they can just burst past the player with a little bit of skill, it won't come up in any numbers where you can see what the actual production of that is, but mm -hmm. it drags players out of your position which frees up other people, so often just the effect they have on sure. the whole team. It's worth saying as well that, as we've mentioned already, because the system is designed to get players into this area to generate, I think you'll get a huge amount more production from him. Well, that's the wide forwards covered. Who have we missed out? Because there's lots of players we could have mentioned, we just didn't mention them all, because it would take forever. So tell us who you think we missed out on in the comments if you want to, that would be lovely, and then we can use them for future episodes. <laughs> now we're going to focus on the midfield situation. Now John, there are a bunch of players in the Spurs team who play in midfield, but they don't all make perfect sense when they put them together. Yeah, I think the big question of what you do with this midfield comes down to how you think that Ange wants to structure his midfield. So we've got the midfield here. I think t number 10 is fairly easy. You've got Lo Celso and Madison. I think people might argue you could upgrade on Lo Celso, but I think he's a decent backup option for them right now. But then you have the, the rest of the players and the two other positions we have are number eight and a number six. We've been seeing Basuma as the starting number six, but actually Bentancourt uh, deputising for him when he's gone. And I think the, the assumption that a lot of people might have is that Bentancourt is like the starting eight, um, and then you know, you've got Saar behind him, so what you need to do is bring in a, a younger six. But Nathan Clark, who is a Spurs fanalist, who um, is, is a very smart guy, is, has been arguing that actually what he thinks that... Do you see fanalist? Fanalist. So he's an analyst who is also a fan? Yes. That's great. Yeah. Did you meant that? Is that uh, a new word? It's not a new word, it's a, it's a fairly old old word, I believe. But you should check out his stuff, he's a very smart guy. If you use Bentacor and Basuma and interchange them as the six, you then have Saar as, as the eight. We then have Hoiberg and Skip, who I think are the, the question marks around this squad. Skip, I don't think, has been able to cope with the physicality of Ange Postacoglu's football. And then Hoiberg is sort of between a six and an eight for me. When he's come on, they've, seven. Yeah, they've sort of been playing as a double pivot when he's come on. And he's not looked great in the, in the eight slot. So I, I think the, the general idea would probably be to move these two on. And then if you look at this, you think, well, the issue here now, the area where you can improve is in, is in this area, right? So you can have Saar as a backup, bring in a number eight, uh, and that will give you, you you're looking for a, a profile of player who's going to be able to add goals, I think, to this team. Yeah, uh, but also, I think so too, yeah. He's going to be like an intense out of possession player as well. And also I think if you bring in someone good enough, you can then interchange them with Madison as well. You could sometimes play them as the 10 if Madison isn't available. Um, so yeah, that's the sort of profile of that I was looking for. Well, I like, I actually like Saar as one of the main starting points, but I want to know who your first signing yeah, would be. So I've gone for Conor Gallagher, um, who is a player who has been linked with Spurs for the last six months, I think. And the reason why I'm going for this is because it makes a huge amount of sense. We've already said that... It's very actually, sensible, yeah. Yeah, the Spurs, Spurs are very sensible with their signings right now. And I think Gallagher fits this position perfectly. He can play as an 8. He can also play as, as a 10. He's going to add goals to Spurs. People think of him as like a ball-winning deep player or something like that. But he's not. He likes to get loads of touches in the box. Yeah, and that, he's a player, I think, who, you know, he can play behind the ball. He can play in front of the ball. Um, he can press in both these situations. So Spurs press is very aggressive. When they're out of possession, what they usually do is they push one of the eights, or the, the ten as we're calling them, up alongside the striker, and then they, they move into this 4-4-2 shape. So if Gallagher is going to be able to play in this system as either an eight or a ten, he's going to have to be able to play pushed up alongside the striker, or if he's playing in this position, you're then expected to jump up and, and monitor the opposition's pivot player. And obviously, Conor Gallagher, we know, is, is fantastic out of possession. So you have a player here who... Ange Postacoglu would be happy playing in either of those positions out of possession as well. Um, and then when it comes to the production, that's what we've talked about. We're looking for a player who's going to score goals. Gallagher is right up there with, with um, players in his position in the Premier League at, at those sorts of things, generating both assists and, and goals. And the sensible part of it as well is that Daniel Levy especially knows how to extract value out of transfer signings. Mm. And because Chelsea... Uh, will need to sell some players to make some money. Therefore, Gallagher's value goes down a little bit because they need to sell, mm -hmm. and that's what they can do. Like when they send Richarlison for less than Everton wanted them to. Yeah, Gallagher is a is a, an academy product, so you're making 
full profit on him if you sell him. So obviously Chelsea have to try and get get back in line with their FFP. So selling someone like Gallagher means that they will will be able to bank it all as profit, which will really help them in that regard. So yeah, it will reduce his cost slightly. Well, now it's time for my player, and I've gone for someone who'll get them loads of goals. It's a very exciting player who currently plays for Sporting. Pedro Gonçalves, or Gonçalves, I should say, not Gonçalves, Gonçalves, or you might see him referred to as Pota. Now, he's been at Sporting for a long time, often referred to as like the next Bruno Fernandes, because uh, we say Bruno Fernandes now, um, but because he doesn't carry Sporting, but creates an awful lot of their chances and scores an awful lot of their goals, loads and loads of goals in his season so far at Sporting. And because I think it's one of these two eight positions here, now Gonçalves can play as a part of a midfield two, which he's been doing for Sporting this season, but he can also play off the left as a kind of winger, so you've got that, well, inside forward, I should say, uh, coming to these positions here. Now, this doesn't make sense because that's exactly what Madison likes to do. He likes to drop deep and often then go up here and attack these sorts of positions. So it doesn't make an awful lot of sense, but Gonçalves is the kind of player who can take you up another level and get you the goals that you need when you're not scoring goals. And of course, if Madison is injured, then you've got someone who can replace that. But you can play the other side as well. It's not perfect. And because it's not perfect, I have some backups for you, John. Uh -huh. Do you want to know who the backups are? I do want to know who the backups are. You're going to like the backups. He's not going to like the backups. I've got Morgan <laughs> Gibbs-White, who plays for Nottingham Forest, not Wolves, Nottingham Forest. Uh, his numbers are excellent. I've been very impressed by how he's played. He'd be expensive, but Nottingham Forest may also face some sort of Problems we need to sell some players, and it might be that they sell one of their stars, young English player. I think he's very exciting, can create along these uh, attacking areas of the pitch. I really like him as a player, and think he'd be very good at someone like Spurs. But also, here's my uh, kind of hipster take, which is Lewis Ferguson, who currently plays for Bologna. Now, he used to be an Aberdeen player. Did you know that? I did know that, yeah. Yes, and that's why <laughs> you weren't entirely <laughs> enthused about this choice. But Lewis Ferguson, for me, is a young captain. Now, I think there's a lot to be said for, although he might not have the technical level of a Champions League team like well, what Tottenham want to be, Lewis Ferguson has been a captain of teams since he was about 18 or 19. So he got into Aberdeen teams about 18 or 19. And he's a box crasher. So he often plays, he can play as a six or an eight, as he has done for Scotland, but he plays mostly as a 10 for Bologna and has done for Aberdeen a lot, where he just crashed the box and scored these goals. So if you get the ball wide and playing these things here, back at cutbacks, that's where you get him. Now, he wouldn't cost that much. He'd be about 17 and a half million or something like that, because uh, he's unproven because he's Scottish he's worth much less as you know we're all worth much less as people and so <laughs> Ferguson would be able to get you goals in that regard he'd be a more of a squad player he wouldn't expect to start every single time but he gives you the leadership and the communication on the pitch that often lacks with certain players even elite players often don't communicate and give you that drive and, uh, and determination that you need and I think that's uh, an often underrated attribute of a player hmm. well these are all very exciting players I'll give you that <laughs> well from Lewis Ferguson now we move on to wild cards John, here's a list of players. Pick one that you think is sensible. I'm going to choose Johan Bakayoko. Why? <laughs> because I think he offers something that Spurs could use. He is a left-footed, right-sided player. Now, at the moment, they already have Kulisevsky. But Kulisevsky, we didn't mention this before, but he can play as perhaps that eight figure as well. So what we then have is Brennan Johnson, right-sided, right-footed player, and then Bakayoko, right-sided, left-footed player. And I think that's quite a nice profile uh, mix. That's good. I'm going to go for two very quickly. Rafa Silva is a very exciting but inconsistent player at Benfica uh, who would be out of contract in the summer. At the current time, he hasn't signed a new deal. Maybe that will change by the time this video comes out. We don't know. But he'd be a good signing, I think, for free just to give you some squad depth. And also, another <laughs> very hip take. I like Hiroki Ito, who's a Japanese international left-back. He can play at centre-back as well. He's big, tall, strong. Um, but you can play in midfield too, so you get that kind of inverted wing-back thing that Odogi does. Very useful as a squad depth, because that's quite a hard profile of player to get. And he's about 24 years old, which is a good sort of age to go in the Spurs, the Spurs team and then not be guaranteed a first-team place. Push Odogi for that first-team spot. Mm. Huh? Yeah. You like that? Yeah. Pretty wild. W wild. So here are what our two sensible teams look like. John's, what's yours? Yeah, so Gallagher in the eight spot and then Savio as the left forward. And I've got Antonio Nusa and Lewis Ferguson and also Hiroki Ito. As a deputy, you can't have all 12 players on the pitch at the same time. We've established this before. Wow. Wow. Well, <laughs> <laughs> wow. well, we've all learned something here today. And that is our Sensible Transfers video on Tottenham. And if you think my team is better than John's, feel free to tell us so in the comments. And also tell us what players you think we left out. Who else would be good for Spurs? And also, what team should we do next? That'd be good, wouldn't it, John? That'd be exciting, yeah. Yeah, you tell us that in the comments. You go and leave one of those little comments on your little keyboard there. So remember, do what I just told you and you'll have a nice time. Okay, goodbye everyone. 
If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Amy Lawrence, and Rafa Honigstein. With the latest transfer news and insight on every Premier League story that matters, theathletic.com puts you inside football, and you can try it free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.